greetings and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You kidding me? You can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. You're all the happy and way. I'm playing as Argos. And as this, as is ever the case when you're playing with Argos, it only ever looks like you have one guy as your whole army. Just the one. No, that's not the case this time. This is a replay from a battle I had against Estrella. Um, this is uh, the third of, of two different, uh, sorry, the third of three different battles that we did together. First two he won. This one, I'm hoping to bring one back. I've brought as Argos a pair of renowned axemen, two Arg of Swordmasters, three Night Runners, which are deployed forward and in the mud right now. I've brought two Savage Centaur Warriors as a Centaur Champion, a pair of Club Warriors, and as always, you know me, when I have 290 funds left over, you buy a Key and Slingers. My hero is a Fighter Vanquisher. Uh, I looked at the map and I saw that it with, if it was north, south, or east, west, I was going to have to contend with mud or trees and have very little room to work with um, with chariots and, and choke points, essentially. So I elected not to bring any chariots with this build, which is that is a, a bit of a gamble considering I was playing against Hippolyta's Amazons. Um, my opponent has brought an Antonere and a pair of horsewomen working very similarly to how most pe people bring centaurs however i don't think he should have brought the antenna right he's also got one two three four five black spears a pair of initiates uh a pair of arista mccoy two in McCoy, escorting a fighter ravager hero and that is the lineup. I don't like the, the pick of initiates. And something you're going to see here in this battle, um, a mistake for my opponent. He does not activate the spread and charge ability on the Black Spears, which gives him a huge boost to melee attack and damage at the expense of um, a melee defense, I believe. I think it also gives them a speed boost as well. So he's going to start moving up here, activating his Antonia Array. Getting them into position early out here to the right. You'll notice I've already fallen back with my Night Runners, having seen that um, there was a good portion of the army that was going to come this way. And I didn't get a really good outflanking opportunity from right here, so I fell back to the tree line. But that's okay, because here comes the Antonia Array. They're going to start moving into the my tree line. As soon as I see them coming, I'm just going to activate all three of my Centaurs. Just get them in here, catch those uh, those Antonia Array as best I can. Huge hit to the morale. Um, I get a little bit of early damage in, but they're quick. They have speed 100 to my speed 96, so they're going to get away a little bit, get to the support of some more horsewomen. But I still feel like I have the advantage here because I also have my Night Runners to deal with any um, any infantry. So he's going to turn around his, uh, his cavalry, get in here. Meanwhile, you'll see in the distance, I've moved up my Achaean Slingers to start shooting up some of these initiates. And I've been moving up my infantry, but seeing that there's only two Black Spears in front of me, I'm going to eventually move all of that infantry this way. In the meantime, though, look at this. He manages to get Your a really good trade heart. between the Horsewomen and the Savage Centaur Warriors. And it's kind of left me a little bit spread out. I don't have the engagements I want with my Centaurs against these Horsewomen. And this one Black Spear pins down all three of my Night Runners, rather expertly, I'd say. So I have to actually give some counter orders. I have to use this Night Runner to intercept the two initiates. I'm not worried about them losing this fight. I'm going to send this Night Runner out and around, try and outflank this Black Spear. But my opponent is really, really good with his with the way he gives orders. He makes sure that if he has one unit engaged, he'll get the other one pulled out as well. He's very similar to me in that regards. He even told me while we were fighting these battles that everything he learned about playing Troy multiplayer, he learned from watching me. Thank you, Estrella. Anyway, so that Night Runner is going to route, but I've also routed his Black Spear. This Night Runner is freed up, and now it's just this initiate I have to deal with. And this initiate, here comes the Fire Ravager hero and the rest of the Amazon Amazonian infantry. Meanwhile, look at this. My Centaur Champions broken out of this. Only 28 kills, not quite earning their XP chevron. This Savage Centaur Warrior did come back. I, I'm recognizing here that I'm losing this battle. I'm not going to win with all these Black Spears around, um, so I have to cut my losses. And by cut my losses, what I plan to do is get my Night Runners out of there, and I'm just going to throw away my Centaurs. If I can see salvage one or two of them, I will. But for the most part, I need to get my my Night Runners out of there. In the meantime, you'll note that some of his uh, horsewomen have come out this way to try and deal with my Achaean Slingers. 
But my Fighter Vanquisher was already in the vicinity, and so were my Club Warriors. They just plow right over my Club Warriors, though. And as they're retreating, I'm going to use my Slingers to open up fire on them, shooting at the Horsemen from behind. My Club Warriors are going to get a little bit um, out overpowered here by the by the Andromacoy. And I'm using my Arc of Swordmasters. They've already used some of their ammo to try and chase back some of these Black Spears. But I have to get my army over here. And I'm marching through the mud. So my Renowned Axemen are going to be moving very, very slowly. Centaur Champions are not going to be able to escape all of this um, all of this cavalry power. Meanwhile, out here, my uh, Savage Centaur Warrior is regrouped right at the line. But he's still chasing with the Black Spear. They do have Spread and Charge activated. And they're just going to go ahead and remove that Savage Centaur Warrior from the equation. But that's good news for me. Because it's keeping it's keeping his infantry engaged. Meanwhile, out here, my night runners are getting into a little bit more than they can chew. They're still routing from this horsewind, but I'm going to go ahead and activate these two night runners to chase off that horsewoman. Um, and sure enough, they're going to fall back, seeing the other infantry. And all three of these units are going to regroup. The main battle is now over here. My renowned axemen are finally in position. I've got uh, one Arista McCoy here. I'm getting outflanked by Black Spears, and here comes some more Antonia Ray, but here comes my Art of Swordmasters, which does push those Black Spears back, and now they're going to have to fight the Horsewomen, which, one of your units has guess what? That works out well for me. We are in the mud, and the Art of Swordmasters have a bonus versus large for some reason? I know. I've never seen a Total War Sword unit with a bonus versus large before. Meanwhile, out here, my Argo Swordmaster is holding the back flank, and with the support of these Ikean Slingers, the Slingers are actually just going to tear apart these unshielded Black Spears. Yeah, that's right. Point blank, Ikean Slinger damage lofted over a tree. And they're actually getting some kills in here. Uh, much to the chagrin of my opponent, my, uh, my Ikean Slinger is doing some work. Um, now, he sent back one of his Arista McCoy to chase my, my Night Runner, so I, I did a dirty thing. I baited the Arista McCoy. I ran back a little bit, stopped, and he was like, oh, okay, well, I'll pull him back. Oh, no, wait. He's mismicrated his infantry. He's forgotten. I didn't forget. I was just waiting until I knew he was committed so I could fall back again. I did this maneuver three times where I fell back a little bit, do some more micro overheal here, fall back a little bit more, do some micro over here, fall back a little bit more. And finally, he's like, okay, well, I can't chase you forever. I need to, I need to go back. But I pulled that Arista McCoy out of this battle and look at the other Arista McCoy. Completely handled by Renowned Axemen, Club Warrior, Cycle Charges, Arc of Swordmaster, still protecting the flanks. He's he's getting fed up with my Akean Slingers. He's going to give them one quick charge. This now puts him behind my uh, Renowned Axemen. So he doesn't stay here. He's going to go ahead and reactivate them into charge into the backs of my Renowned Axemen. But just as I activate my Arc of Swordmasters to kind of pin them in place. Meanwhile, I did tell you I brought a Fighter Vanquisher, and this is what my Fighter Vanquisher has been doing all this time. The Fighter Ravager hero got a little bit too close to the battle, and I've shut her down. She's now stuck in that duel. Arista McCoy are finally back to the fight, but guess who else is back to the fight? That's right, my Night Runners are back. They went the long way, but because they're so you know fleet of foot, they got back in here. Well-timed Aristea keeping this hero still in the fight. He's going to try and escape my hero. Who's been who's stuck them in this duel all the time? He's trying to use the terrify to get the renowned axeman out of here, but they're gonna break those black spears. We do have a fresh wrist McCoy we have to deal with. The um, horsemen over here are completely handled, and my Akean Slingers are cleaning up this horsewoman as well. They're now up to 22 kills, have almost earned their first XP chevron. And there's some regrouped units that are in this fight that I'm going to have to deal with once I'm sure that those uh, horsemen aren't going to play a bigger role later on. I'm going to have those slingers retarget somewhere else. My Arc of Swordmaster is taking a ton of damage, but they're doing really well in this battle. Here comes my next target. I see this Initiate out here trying to outflank my Arc of Swordmaster. Um, and I'm just like, nah, we're not going to have any of that. So I, I, oh, I, I changed my mind to target this Black Spear. That shatters that. These uh, Akean Slingers are earning value and getting rid of units for me. This Arist of has come back to the battle. This uh, hero is trying desperately to stay alive. I was still chasing of my Fighter Vanquisher hero, even though I did not have the air stay advantage. There goes another Terrify on my Renowned Axeman, but I'm going to get my my hero out of this Arista McCoy bundle over here. I'm just going to chase after the Fighter Ravager here. Only 290 hit points left. I'm now try taking aim at some Andromachoi with my with my Achaean Slingers, having dealt with the Initiates handily and supported by the Arc of Swordmasters. They're done. I activate the Arista on my hero. I'm going to charge Wade right on in here into this battle. How's it going, lady? Hades nice to meet you. And you've been claimed for Hades. That's right. One maneuver, all that was needed from the hero. Battle over. What a fight that was. That was 
man, I had a lot of fun with that one because it, it isn't over until 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 the Amazonian lady sings, right? That's what that battle was. It really came down to to it looked like I was losing. It looked like I was losing. I I had three um, night runners and three cavalry units pretty much pinned and removed from the fight. But I I picked my resources. I picked my battles. I regrouped. And I got my forces together, and I was able to pull off a victory. It came at the expense of, you know, some club warriors, my my centaurs, but everything else was able to get the job done. My opponent didn't take the, make the best use of spread and charge. But let's go over some of the some of the statistics. You'll see triple digit numbers down the line. Not enough done with the uh, black spears. This one, however, thirteen thirty six um, damage caused as gold value, which is very good. Um, the swordswoman, though, completely handled. And then, uh, horsewoman doing just fine. Antonary, I, I, I don't think they paid for themselves. I, I don't know the cost of Antonary off the top of my head. It's not a unit you see picked too terribly often. The initiates, uh, I don't know. They might have, they might have paid for themselves. No, they didn't. They, they cost at least 300. But for me, you might think that my, uh, my MVP would be this, um, the Sark of Swordmaster over here with 1369, but that's not the case. My MVP is actually this renowned Axeman. 150 kills, 1693 damage, cost his gold value, 18,000 points of damage, 14,000 points of damage. I had some great numbers all around, but it's ultimately this uh, this renowned Axeman that won me the fight. Um, my Night Runners, though they did not pay for themselves in damage caused, they paid for themselves in in slowing down the Aristomachoi and keeping them late from the battle and pinning a black spear for me and dealing with some of these initiates and in even slowing down the impact of the horsewoman. But the unit that most surprised me, 524 points of, of damage caused value on a Nikian Slinger. I just put it right in the middle of the mud pile and I said, I'm gonna throw slings until I can't anymore. And they managed 24 kills in, in 7,000 damage. I, you don't see that from 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 cannon fodder, and that's why I bring them. I bring them because I hope that my opponent will waste their effort on them. But with so many unshielded infantry around, with so many shielded units turning their backs to me, I couldn't resist. And they did great. They even routed multiple units off the battlefield at the end too, with the support, obviously, of much more experienced Argive sword masters. But still. They didn't earn their XP today, but boy, am I proud of them. All right, that's it for me today. Ta-ta. I love you all. I'll see you guys in the next video.